Hello everyone, it is Ryan here on the Syntax Byte, and in this video we're going to have a quick look at using the Google Maps Directions API uh, and Visual Basic for Applications to bring some travel time and travel distance data between two points into Microsoft Excel. Uh, specifically, we're going to make a function that you can call uh, from the cell here to pull in the travel time and travel distance. Uh, based on two points. So you can use an address. Uh, the directions API is pretty dynamic, so we have a place name here. So we're going to try and find this information between the US Capitol and the, uh, the White House here, which I've given with an exact address. Um, so the, the directions API should be able to handle that quite easily for us and we should be able to get the travel time and distance by car. So to get started here, the first thing you're going to need is an API key to use the directions API. So why don't we go ahead and get one of those. So first of all, you can go to this get started page on the Google developers. I'll have it below. You can click this get started with the Google Maps platform. I already have an account and stuff set up, so I'm just going to create a new API key. I have a project here called Excel Macros, and we're just going to create an API key. Okay. And then we're going to go close. Okay. Um, and that should show up over here under the directions API now. Perfect. So it's asking me to secure it. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to delete it after the video anyway. But we can go ahead and copy that now. So the first thing we want to do is get a bit of an understanding of how the API works and then we can jump into creating the macro. So why don't we copy this test URL they have, go paste and go. Oh, it tells me my API key is invalid. Thank you. Okay, probably shouldn't paste the entire URL again as the API key. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so this gives us, this was between like Disneyland and Hollywood Studios or something. Universal Studios and Disneyland, okay. Um, so you can see here it's got this routes object, so there's geocoded waypoints. We don't really care about that. Um, we have routes here. Um, it gives us a single route. Uh, there could be multiple routes. For the sake of the function, I'm just going to always take the first route and assume that's okay, uh, that that's representative. It gives us this uh, array called legs here. We can see there's only one leg, but we will in the function incorporate adding together legs in case there were multiple legs. And then it just gives us the distance. Uh, this is in meters and the time in seconds. So and that's what our Excel function is going to target to get from the API. We're going to put in a request with the addresses from Excel and look for these two values and spit those back out. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is you'll notice this is a JSON API. To make it a little bit easier to work with the JSON API, we're going to go ahead and download the VBA tools JSON. I've already got it downloaded, but I'll have this link in the description for anyone who may not. Uh, once we get back into Excel here, I'm going to actually go ahead and paste that API key in there right now, just so we have that. Let's go ahead and get that copied. Um, and that will be an input to our function as well. You could hard code the API key in VBA, but I just think it's a little bit nicer to throw it in Excel itself there. A little bit more flexible um, if you're going to be sending this to someone who isn't as familiar with VBA. Let's go ahead and open up the Visual Basic Editor here. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to go file, import file. We want to find where we have VBA JSON and import this JSON converter.bas. Go open. 
Perfect, that will allow us to use that. It shows up under modules. Next thing we're gonna do is create a new module. Um, wherever that is. Uh, insert module. We can call this um, like Google Maps or something. Okay. Uh, and then within this module is where we're going to create our functions. Uh, so the first function that we're going to create is the travel time function, and it is going to get um, the travel time for us. So we can go function, not sub, no, function, travel time. Uh, we're going to take an origin, the starting place, the destination, and that API key. We're going to start off with de, uh, declaring a str URL as a string, and we're going to use this just to store our URL. And so we need that URL. We need to build sort of that URL out. So we can start with this portion of it right here. We'll copy that into there. Then we're going to go and, sorry, and origin, and that will concatenate it for us. And then we're going to do and. Uh, and then so that will plop the origin right in here. And then we're going to do and destination equals. Ooh, not at all what I want to do. I really don't like the VBA editor, to be honest. It's got to be one of the worst code editors around. OK, and then we can do and destination. So this is just going to build us one long string. That is the URL, but it's going to allow us to pass the destination and origin to the function and have those inserted in the URL by VBA. OK, so and then we also need and key equals and then uh, to throw our API key in there. Perfect. And so now this is the URL and now we need to make, of course, a web request. Um, and so in order to do that, we need to add some references to Visual Basic here. So we can go Tools, References. And the references that you want to add are the Microsoft Scripting Runtime and Microsoft Win HTTP Services. That one there. Just click OK. And so that should allow us to make the web request here. So in order to do that, we're going to make this HTTP request object with create object. And that is going to be an msxml2.xml HTTP. Uh, and then with that object, we are going to .open. Uh, it's going to be a get request. So that's the type of request to str URL. Uh, passing false, which I don't know what it means right now, unfortunately, and then dot send. Um, and then we can end with. Uh, so this is going to fire off that web request. And then, of course, we need to store the response. So the JSON, all of this that it gets back, we're going to store that in a string. Uh, so response equals HTTP rec dot response text okay um, so now we have a string containing our JSON file we need to use VBA JSON to parse it and to find those integers that we were trying to pull out of this so 
So in order to do that, we can simply do a response. Uh, sorry, dim parsed as dictionary. Uh, so VBA JSON is going to return a dictionary, and we're going to call it parsed. So we'll do set parsed equal to JSON converter, and remember that is from VBA JSON that we added. Dot parse JSON. It's auto completing, so we know we've added that correctly. Uh, we're going to pass in that response. So remember, response has already been converted to a string representing HTTP rec response text. We now dim seconds as an integer. We're going to use this because we're going to loop any of these legs that it has. So usually there's just one leg, uh, but we're going to loop any of them and add the uh, the values together in case there were multiple legs to get the total trip length. Okay, so we're gonna go for each leg in parsed. Uh, so parsed is our JSON file. We first need to go under routes, and like I said, we're just gonna assume the first route is correct, okay? So we're gonna go into that routes. Uh, sorry, parsed routes. We're gonna use that routes array we're going to get the first item remember vba isn't always zero indexed so that's why it's one even though it is zero represented in firefox there and then we're going to get the legs and then so for each of those legs we're going to say seconds equals seconds plus leg uh, duration and then the value under duration so that's of course going to be uh, we're getting right here duration and then that value right there perfect and we can go ahead and do next leg and then we set the value of the function to that second so that is what is going to be returned by the travel time function so the travel time should be working now and unfortunately I seem to have saved this as a macro fee uh, free workbook we're just going to resave that. Excellent. Uh, so now our travel time function should work. So let's go ahead and try it. Travel time uh, between US Capitol, this address, which represents the White House, and pass in our API key. And let's see what we get. So we get 622. That should be the number of seconds if we just do that. Um, divided by 60 oh it's like 10.3 minutes and I have it actually pulled up here okay that's interesting it's not quite on but seems to be about right seems to be reasonable anyway um, it could just be let's go ahead and refresh now this is 11 minutes okay so it's probably just some sort of a variation in traffic or route that it's doing but 10.3 and this is 11 I can definitely buy that so that's the travel time function um, what we could do now is we can go ahead and copy this and just basically do essentially the same function for travel distance of course you can make a separate function that sort of does the web request because that part is the same for both and then just returns this dictionary and then have another function that takes this dictionary and finds what you want within it but this is just the quickest and dirtiest way to get both functions but if you're planning to create a number of these functions that would probably be a far cleaner way to do it um, so then what we want to change here is we're going to call this one called Travis distance and instead of getting the time, we're going to get the distance. So all we're going to do, we're going to rename seconds to meters because the API always returns the distance in meters, even for American trips. Uh, so then you just have to convert to kilometers or miles as you prefer uh, in Excel. Or you could do it in VBA, but I recommend doing it in Excel because it just is more flexible that way. Uh, so where we have duration here, we're going to do, I believe it's distance. So distance. 
Uh, routes is still fine. We could still take the first leg, and we want this to be travel distance equals seconds. Perfect. Okay, so we can go ahead and save that, and then right here we're gonna go ahead and do travel distance. We'll use the same origin, same destination, uh, and the same API key. Go ahead and hit enter. Okay, we're getting zero quite interestingly. Why is that the case? Those are all correct. Meters is meters. Ah, seconds doesn't actually exist anymore, so we just have to change that to meters as well. Let's go ahead and try that again. Perfect, and we get 2,763 meters. We can go ahead and just look up what that would be converted to miles. So, uh, 2,763 meters to miles. That's about 1.7 miles. Oh, that's a bit odd. That conversion doesn't make sense. Okay, so I've gone ahead and had a look at what the response we should be getting is in the browser, and it does say 1.7 miles or 2763 meters there. Um, what I believe is happening, if we go back here, you can see it says 2.4 miles, so that strikes us at all, as off, although the travel time is similar. I believe what's happening is if you go to walking, there's actually kind of this other route here, and I'm going to guess that somehow it ended up taking a route that was more similar to the walking route, which is about, you can see about 1.8 miles. So I'm gonna guess that that's what's going on and that the everything's working normally with VBA and the API, uh, but that it's just giving us a little bit different results from what we're getting here in the browser on Google Maps itself. Uh, so that is unfortunate, but I don't think it's anything to be too concerned about. Whoa, okay, apparently I added added this okay but that is a uh, relatively accurate distance so and of course you could you could do a conversion I'm not actually sure how many meters are in a mile I will just do a simple round uh, this divided by a thousand to two and concatenate km on there just to give us about 2.76 kilometers for the trip there so that is how you can do travel time and distance with the Google Maps directions API in Excel there's so many possible use cases for this especially if you have uh, lots of addresses or something uh, check out my other video on how to import JSON data from the web. Maybe you could import a list of addresses from the web and then find the travel times between them. That would be quite an interesting project. I can picture lots of different use cases for that. Also, if you guys had any difficulties following along with this tutorial or would like to just copy and paste the code, I do have a written tutorial with the full source code linked down in the description on my website. So definitely check that out. Anyway, guys, I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.